better jump off the bridge. Yeah, but there's the one pedal drive. Right, oh, I'm here in beautiful Queenstown, New Zealand. Such a sick, sick little town. This place is awesome. But today, we are taking the brand new Ford Mustang Mark E GT. So I've just been here for the past few days doing the Ford all-terrain drive here in New Zealand, up in the mountains. And they have the brand new Mark E X here. And this is the GT. This is gonna be my first electric car drive so let's get in and go for a spin so i spent some time in it yesterday driving around i know my first ev experience I'm about to pull out on the road i've got the settings on untamed which are it's gnarliest settings so here we go holy <laughs> wow <laughs> i was at a hundred I think the, from what the guys were saying yesterday, I think it does zero to a hundred in like 3.7 seconds or something. Wow, that definitely puts you back in your seat. <laughs> Drop back down to 70. Uh, speed limit through here is a hundred. We'll go back up to a hundred. Like it makes like a V8 sound through the stereo system. So you actually sound like it's actually accelerated. This is... <laughs> Okay, my first electric car drive. Pretty fun so far. So I really wanted to try an electric car. I hadn't had the opportunity to do it yet, so I thought, today's Monday, I'm flying back home this afternoon from New Zealand, so I was like, I'll steal a Mark E, I'll go for a drive. Like honestly, like driving it, like it's not silent, you can still hear the tires and stuff, but it's like you were just driving a four cylinder, sort of car like you can't really hear modern engines now so when you're driving so it just it just sounds like that it just sounds like a, a small sedan but then when you get up it oh boy is there some is there some power there so it's definitely intrigued me as to uh yeah what an electric car is like to 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 deal with for a day to live with i should say charging experience I had last night. We took it down to Queenstown to charge it up. So we're just in Queenstown and we're just at a couple of charges here. Nearly all the cars that are parked here in front of the charger aren't electric cars. So it's kind of making it hard for us to get the car in a position to be able to charge it. As you can see, that, that plug goes in the front of this one. That one goes in the side. So we need a little bit more access to get to it. So yeah. Trying to uh, EV charge has been fun this afternoon, but pretty tight little car park in here, so it's charging. All right, so the benefit to this, I think, is that you can tell the missus you've got to charge the electric car and go to the pub and have a couple of beers. Can't come home, honey, sorry. Got to charge me car. Plugged it in and then uh, went and had a couple of beers, so good excuse if you're uh if you're a bloke and you live in the city and missus says where are you sorry honey i'm stuck at the pub i have to charge the car so that could be a new excuse that we can uh now use lads they probably won't accept it but we could definitely try like feeling to drive the steering is the steering is amazing that's one thing about Fords with the Ranger the Everest and and yeah their new steering setups I just feel so smooth and so refined it's one thing I do like about Fords is the uh, is the steering you've got a nice little display screen here in front of you it's it's uh, letting me know that I'm in untamed mode because it's got graphics and stuff going on gives me my range 182 k's i got 65 percent battery i got in it yesterday and i said to the guys i feel like i'm sitting in front of a big bang and olsen speaker and he goes yeah it is i was like oh, okay so the whole front here looks actually like a speaker which is uh pretty pretty interesting and there is a speaker inbuilt into it so 
So by no means am I fully against electric cars at all. I think as long as they work and they do that, they do what they're supposed to do, which is get you from A to B. I think there's there's only positives that can come from it. Doing the things that I do back at home, I don't think I could justify ever buying an EV unless it was just for a daily or something. That if as long as I had the range and I could charge it pretty efficiently from home. But if you definitely live in a even a town here like Queenstown, if you just kind of get around, might go up to the mountains and stuff, and you don't really do big big drives, this an electric car is pretty pretty good way of about going about things I think no more fuel yes you got to charge it and that is the biggest issue I think with electric vehicles right now is finding somewhere to charge it so I think the one thing that I would do if I was considering buying an electric car or an electric SUV or anything like that was is basically do a big costings and the cost of fuel that I would save over the period that I'd own it then also how much the battery is because the battery isn't going to last forever uh, warranty on the vehicle as well but yeah I think battery replacement may be the thing that um, is just too expensive and it's how long the battery would last how they perform over a long period of time and how long how much of it how long of a life you can actually get out of your battery so I think another thing you need to do is with your costings is also add up uh, mechanical work. So working out what this vehicle needs over the life that you're going to own it, uh, the, f the fuel that you're going to be saving by not having a combustion engine, all those sorts of things would come into it. How much is the electricity going to cost you? So it's all fine to go and buy an electric vehicle, but if it doesn't make sense for what you're going to do, then there's really no point. But if, if it's going to tick all your boxes and do everything you needed to do with it, then fantastic. So one thing I have just played with is one pedal drive. So it has obviously an accelerator and a brake pedal, but on the screen you can select one pedal drive. And so what that does is when I let off the accelerator, it brakes, so it does regenerative braking. So I'll just do it now, let off, and it starts braking on me. Just coming up to a roundabout, I'll do it here at the roundabout. At the roundabout, take the second exit onto Frankton Road. We're going on Frankton Road, Siri said. So coming out the roundabout, I let off the accelerator. No, I'm not using any brake. It's ready to regeneratively really charging the battery. That's a hard word to get out, isn't it? But then just brings the vehicle to a stop, and then you just control that with the accelerator, whether it's on, off, whatever you want to do. Swining up through the mountains here. This is a really, really nice drive. So I'm going from Queenstown to Glen Orchie, I think it's called. Don't quote me on my pronunciation, but I think it's, I think everyone's been saying Glen Orchie. This is a really nice drive up through the mountains. <laughs> I never thought I'd feel this about an electric car, but damn, this thing is fun, especially on these windy roads. Oh my God, this thing is so much fun. And that one pedal drive is so good for this mountainy road because I just let off the throttle and I don't have to move across to the brake. It just, yeah, I don't have to move across to the brake. It just starts braking for me and then obviously regens the battery. But some of these windy hills. <laughs> but then when you do hit the brake, oh boy, this thing is awesome. Never thought I'd say this about an electric car, but <laughs> would I consider buying one? Yes, probably. If I if I lived if I lived in New Zealand, I think I know what car I'd own. Because <laughs> damn, this is fun! <laughs> oh, oh my God! The acceleration in this thing is just insane. But just like the confidence this thing gives you with that one pedal drive is just sick because as soon as you let off it starts to brake so oh. <sighs> I'm having some fun. <laughs> so 
come down on a lovely little spot down here on the road to Glen Orchy. So just working my way around the marquee and trying to figure everything out. Pretty much the same as a standard car, except obviously there's no engine anymore because it's electric. So popping the bonnet, you've got another big boot as you will do in the back as well. You can see all my gear in here that I've chucked in there. There's actually plenty of storage in this thing uh, to put all your bits and pieces. So we'll go for a little bit of a walk around. So it's got pretty nice styling up the front. You can see that front, front spoiler joints down through there. Looks pretty good. Obviously all the grills all filled in because it's electric. Come around the side, you've got Brembo brakes. The tire size, uh, if I can find it. I think they're 245-45 R20s is the tire size. And as far as I'm aware, this does regenerative braking. Got your Mac E for X badge just down there. On here you have this little section here to be able to get into the car. That's your obviously your door handle. Do you have a keypad just here if you want to use that as well? Then on the back door here, do have that button to access in the rear. So we'll take a look inside in a second. Obviously you've got Brembo brakes front and rear by the look of it. Got the Mustang style tail lights just in there. GT badge here on the back. The whole roof is uh, panoramic. So it's a whole glass roof on top of this thing. Got your antenna up the back. This nice wing off the back window. So I think it actually does look pretty sick. It would look awesome in flat black, I reckon. Coming around, got a camera just there as well. And pretty much the same, same on this side. Do have your charging port just here, which we used the other night for charging the unit. I think that would be better, better on the front of the vehicle, just from our experience the other night. I think it would be better here in the grill, although it would take away from how good this thing looks. So maybe not. Got your toe point just down here by the look of it. And another camera here in the front. So, but it does look very Mustang. Right, so we'll jump inside. So you just press the button. The door kind of pushes out for you. Jumping in to the giant Bang Olsen's speaker. You can see the label just over there. So it's for this material here in the front. So you do have a cool animation that uh, comes up. You've got this little display screen just here. So it's got my range, my battery percentage, seat belts, kilometers, and then what drive. Drive mode I'm in, reverse, neutral, drive. L, I'm not entirely sure what L is for. Um, like I said, I've only just taken this thing today and want to go for a drive in it. So, got a glove box down there. A nice armrest with GT written in the top. You dial here, park brake. I think that's for your parking sensors. Obviously, your hazard lights. This massive screen here, so we'll go back to the home button. And obviously, you've got your whole Apple CarPlay and things like that as well. But plenty of features in this thing. Very similar sort of layout to, to Ranger and Everest with all the things you can do. But there's the one pedal drive that I was talking about. Uh, propulsion sound so the sound of you actually accelerating uh, it sounds pretty awesome and then untamed plus is for track days so if you want to go and do a track day in it and we'll just close that then you got untamed active and whisper so a few different settings there and it changes the the lighting through the cabin as well so it's pretty cool Got a wireless charge pad and stuff down here, a couple of cup holders. I'll just charge my GoPros from the USB-C and the USB outlet, A outlet just down there. Got a glove box. Bang & Olsen speakers in the doors. Got like Al Alcantara here on the doors as well. Your lock button's over here. Up top you've got a uh, sunny holder. Got the Mustang badge. Got lights here for your interior as well by the look of it and you've got your sunshades but you can see the uh, giant panoramic roof that's in the back cup holders there in the center so plenty of plenty of room in this thing definitely no shortage of room 
and then you do have cameras up in here as well power button just here for on and off starting it and then you got your headlight controls just down here on the right got all your mirror and this is for your door handle just here so that lets you know that the car's still on reminding you obviously because it doesn't have a motor so it doesn't make a sound to pop your front trunk just down there you hold the uh it's obviously got the 2x there for the the front bonnet as well so and then down on this side you've got your accelerator and your brake so this isn't a full in-depth review or anything like that but just wanted to give you guys my first impressions on driving a an electric car because i've never had the opportunity to actually drive one yet so this is yeah i thought i'd take the opportunity take one for a spin let you know what i think about electric cars and this thing's pretty sick um yeah it definitely has its advantages in some aspects for people that want an electric car if you live in the city and things like that so for me personally if i lived in this environment in new zealand in queenstown i could buy an electric car you can charge it charge it here in town as well grab a couple of beers from the pub while i'm doing it so yeah everything has a purpose i believe everything has its right application like I couldn't do what I'd do in the F-250 with the Raptor. It just wouldn't be possible because I couldn't tow as much. And so every vehicle has, has its use. So the weather has definitely set in today, but such a cool looking car. So I think there is three versions of this, don't quote me on that, but this is the GT, so this is the most powerful one. I'm not sure if this one has the most range. Again, I was just given the keys, the guys at Ford said take it for a spin, see what you think. So this is currently released in New Zealand, I think it's coming to Australia very soon. But Very cool looking car. Breathe. 